So knowing the chords naturally is something that is so important if we really want to be fluid improvisers. Um, and so we are doing that when we start mapping out these shapes. But another way to do that is to think about uh, being the rhythm section, being the accompanist. The accompanist. So you could be the you could be the guitar player and try to come up with uh, different double stops that outline the chords. For example, I might do take a song. Um, what should we do? Like uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, for example. Just take that first part, which is E7, and I generally will do um, like a third and third and seventh is always a good voicing. A7. D7. G. So thinking like an accompanist really helps you to understand not only what they're doing and how you're then going to fit into that, but it helps, again, it helps you to map out those, those chord shapes. So finding thirds and sevenths really important. Um, finding roots and thirds and playing those in double stops. And what you can do is take any standard you're learning and take those formulas and try to uh, come up with your own backing track or, or to play along with the song using uh, like a comping technique. So let's look at how we would accompany over a song like All of Me, for example, which has an interesting um, set of chords that we can uh, study. So first one would be C major. So it goes C major. E7, so I could do A7. D minor, back to E7, A minor, D7, D minor 7, the G7. So let me do that again. So I did C major, E7, A7. Again, I'm doing uh, two voices, two, two different voicings per chord because we have a little bit more space. Sometimes you don't have time for that and you just do one voicing. But for the sense of practice and to get more options, I'm giving you two. complicated um, but there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do there um, and if you want to just kept keep it simple and not have moving lines I might just do something like this So let's take a look at Minor Swing, another classic song in the, the Gypsy Jazz repertoire. And here's some simple chord voicings that we can do. So for A minor, then D minor, E7, A minor, D minor, A minor, E7. So very simple, just a lot of roots, fifths, thirds, just the, the general outline of the, of the chords. 
So that was a simpler version, but if we want to do something a little more interesting, we might do something a little more like this with some walking bass lines and some, uh, uh, some more movement. <laughs> a little bit about what I'm doing there as far as uh, the bow is concerned and some of the rhythms. So the general uh, rhythm I'm doing is just you know, trying to emulate the guitar player. Getting that emphasis in tune four. And then I might throw in, you know, little rhythmic stabs. Generally off beats. try to mess around with a walking bass line. But yeah, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of things you can explore there. And it's a great way to get those uh, chord tones that you're starting to map out and you're starting to work on into the context of actual songs. Um, so a great thing to practice. And then if you're in a setting where you just have, um, you find yourself with two violinists, you don't have a guitar player, then this is a good opportunity to explore comping techniques so you guys can back each other up. And so keep in mind not to get concerned if you hear different versions of a song and there's different chord progressions and there's substitutions. The general shape of the song, the general harmony is always going to be consistent, but there's passing chords that might come in and there's substitutions. Um, so overall, just explore, try different things, um, but the, the generally make sure that the voice leading is there and consistent.